Mike Manal from the Nerds of Color. Thank you so much for being here. Um, hi, Anna. Hi, Yoshi. How are you guys? Hello. Doing good. <laughs> Very good, very good. I'm so excited that folks are finally going to get to see this one. I I feel like I've cheated. I've had the pleasure of seeing this one um, a while back, a couple of times already. And I, I've had the great pleasure of talking with you guys a, a little bit in the past. Um, but now we, we can definitely do it on a wider scale and everyone can definitely hear your thoughts about the film and uh, hear some awesome behind the scenes tidbits. Uh, and just, just in general, how fun this movie is. I, I can't wait. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. I mean, yep. Yoshi and I actually are like Yoshi's my first friend from LA. We met doing background. Same to me too. Yeah. Oh my god, that's so that's that's really cool. And then you guys, this is the first time you've worked together like officially on like a movie together, right? Like something that we. This is the first time we've worked together on something that not one of us is like made for our own projects and stuff. Right. So that was that was awesome. That is yeah. really cool. Oh my God. Uh, it's, it's fate is what it is. Um, you guys being able to, to finally work together on, on a big studio project like Blade of the 47 Ronin. So I'm excited. <laughs> um, so uh, Anna, I'd, I'd love to start with you. Um, I think this is definitely something that you and I've spoken about before, but um, you know, for those of us who are very familiar with your work, it's more in the comedy scene. It's more in the comedy background. You're a hilarious, uh, you know, influencer and and video content creator. You're you're really great at stand up and everything like that. And you know what I think a lot of folks won't realize, uh, just you know, from seeing the poster and everything, they're going to prepare for this epic action movie, but they don't realize that it's actually really funny. Um, <laughs> you know, and and I I think when they watch it, they'll start to see that you know your sense of humor, your comedic timing really comes into play there. Um, how did that really prepare you to just you know deliver a lot of the lines in the scripts and some of the funny tongue in cheek moments in this movie? Yeah, I mean, I will say Yoshi has the funniest scene in the entire film. <laughs> he steals the show, just so everyone's aware. Um, but I honestly think uh, stand up comedy really prepared me to do. Uh, any kind of comedic timing role and this one in particular like Luna is written so much in my voice like I was a very alternate sort of like coast comedian my stand-up was very dark it was about abortion and my sister's suicide and Asian family dysfunctional dynamics and so Luna's very edgy very off the cuff kind of like almost shocking in a way so I do feel like my style of comedy very naturally lent into being able to improvise lines for her that's awesome. You say I stole the show, but you own the show. And it was, <laughs> dude, because the thing is that I wasn't there for some of those uh, moments that you had and watching it on film, like, yo, know, it straight up took me off guard and, and it was so lovely to see. And again, always so fucking hilarious. I mean, <laughs> no, let it fly. Let it fly. Come on. <laughs> All right, we're, sw- we're slinging them. It's an R-rated movie. There's F-bombs in this movie. If you're watching this interview, you should know what you're getting into. You're getting into some Deadpool-style fun here, you know, with, yeah. like, the action, <laughs> the F-bombs. Come on, guys. Uh, yeah, so let it fly. Let it fly. Um, yeah, Yo- Yoshi, um, I-, I do agree. I agree with both of you guys. Uh, you know, Anna, of course, this is th- this is your show. I, I thought that this was uh, a-, a great, uh, you know, starring piece for you. Um, but I do agree that Yoshi, you know, every time we get to see you on screen, it's a pleasure. You do steal the scenes that you're in. And it's it's not just how awesome you are with the Kanabo, with your action and everything, which we will get into. I definitely want to get into that. But I think one of the things that's just the most striking is your look in the movie. You got this very unique look. You got the frosted tips. You look good. You've got the the sleeveless vest, with they, which they call attention to, which I think is, is They do indeed. <laughs> I mean, uh, what, what was, did you have a say in the style? Did you have an influence in how uh, Sun was going to look? And, and if not, then, then what'd you think of it? What'd you think of putting on this costume, basically? I mean, Ron pretty had, um, um, he was, what is it, sure of a lot of things. So he knew what he wanted um, going into it. Before we even started, before I even went to like Budapest to prep, he was like, get bigger. Um, I'm putting you in sh- like no sleeves. And I was like, how much bigger? He was like, just as big as you can in, in, a, in a month and a half. I was like, all right. And I did get as big as I could. I, uh, I'm currently 170. I was like 185 at the time. Damn. So it, yeah, it was, it was all the meat and potatoes and, and the salty food, dude. Remember yeah. that? 
I do. Um, it, was just, it was crazy too to see because I've seen Yoshi when he was skinny and when he's been buff. Yeah, you yeah. Pesh like with no <laughs> neck, all arms, and I was like, "Whoa, this guy can like kill me just by looking at me." He said, "No neck, no neck." <laughs> As a personal oh. friend of Yoshi's, Anna, does he do the sleeveless thing often? Like, does he yeah, wear I, a sleeveless? I mean, I mostly see you shirtless online, but like. Right. I, I rarely ever do sleeveless. It's like I have a shirt on or I don't. It's yeah. not, not in between. <laughs> you're, you're just depriving people of the gun show, my man. I mean, like, come on. You gotta, you gotta rip the sleeves off and give the people what they want. That's what Dude, I Dude, where's the Asian G.I. Joe? Because that's kind of almost what your costume reminded me of. I was like, I can see this guy being like Rambo or like just like a, the Asian version of every military superhero we've ever seen. I'm into no. it. Let's go. I'm the yeah. Punisher. <laughs> It, it, it did remind me of a G.I. Joe character. I, I really wanted to, like, call him, give him a name, like, Gun Show or something like that. Gun Show. Yeah, yeah, it would be a good G.I. Joe. Well, that name. was something that, you know, the look of Sun was yeah. very specific because even, again, he wanted him sh- uh, sleeveless. He knew exactly what he wanted, and he wanted, like, um, he wanted hair color that wasn't the whole head, yeah. um, and he wanted it, like, to to reflect the sun, basically, was his idea. And I think he did just that. Originally, the I don't think the hairstylist understood what he meant. So they gave me like highlighter yellow hair. And I, they sent the photo to Ron. He was like, what is that? <laughs> I was so glad he was not down for the highlighter yellow. Because I was, I, was, I was like, orange we can play with. We can play with orange. It, it looked good in the movie. Highlighter yellow, I feel like, would be a little too Springfield. You know, a little too Simpsons there. And I, yeah. I don't think that would work. <laughs> yeah. But it looked really didn't good. match my skin tone at all. <laughs> but but you weren't the only one that got shredded, Anna. You you look great in this too. Uh, did you have a crazy workout regimen as well for? for Yo, she's Wild been shredded. Seasons? Hold on, oh. hold on. I feel like <laughs> people true. don't know this about you, Anna. But you've been shredded. Like you are one of the friends that I know that is like so good on like wanting to learn new skills, wanting to learn and and train. And you're pretty consistent with that stuff that I've seen. You learn mm-hmm. more skills throughout the years than most of my friends who are like, oh, I want to do this. I'm like, Anna's already doing it. She's got it. <laughs> well, thank you. I mean, I, I definitely was the least physically capable on set. Everyone, I mean, like Yoshi used to do stunts. Mike Moe's a martial arts teacher. Teresa Ting's a wushu champion. So it was actually, it was inspiring to be the sort of pupil fish out of water. And it sort of paralleled what Luna's experiences with uh, the cast of characters within the film is everyone else is this lethal weapon. And she's, you know, an ex-con who maybe can operate a gun here and there. Um, but we, we had like pretty intense training. We would train for five hours a day to the point where I'd be like, guys, I think I need a break. I like went up to Yoshi at one point. I was like, Yoshi, do you ever feel like, like there's water running down your leg, but there isn't? And he was like, what? He's like, no. I was like, okay, I don't know if I tore something in my leg. I was like, that's nerve pain. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but I was so scared to say anything because everyone was just so good at what they were doing and so gung-ho that I was like, I can't be the one person who's like, I need to lay down. Everything hurts. I think what it was too, the rest of us, like we've done other projects who, well, that was action heavy. Uh, I think if anything, it was you and Teresa that hadn't done any action like productions, you know? Yeah. And so the rest of us knew to like, take it easy on, on a, some moments and like find ways to be like, I'm sitting in the corner stretching. <laughs> I'm, I'm working out right now to, <laughs> to rest from the choreography. Whereas you guys were like, I need to learn. I want to, you know, and I was like, you ran yourself ragged. (laughs) Honestly, I didn't know this because also what they did, Mike, is you had to do like a one hour weightlifting session before we went into the rehearsals. So I would go hard on weights. And then the next day they're like, all right, we're going to do it again. I was like, what? I was like, "My, my whole body hurts. I don't. And so I would notice people sitting in the corner. And so then I would try to take out my laptop and be like, oh, I'm working on the scene for the movie over here. I can't, I can't do the rehearsal. <laughs> See, that's the thing study. about movie magic. No one, no one actually knows that you're doing these things right before the scene, because when you guys are executing, and this is, this is kind of where the magic of Ron comes in. It doesn't, it looks like everyone's a trained assassin. Everyone's a trained martial artist. It's the choreography in this movie is so crazy good 
Like you, you can't tell that it's, it's yours or Teresa's, you know, first time engaging in a lot of these hardcore kind of stunt work and everything like that. Um, so, so it's, it, it prompts me to have to ask, like, you know, can you guys describe that choreography? I mean, both of you guys, like, what was it like? How long did you guys work on these things? Did you ever accidentally hit each other or anything like that? Like, was it, how, how was the whole process for you? I'm gonna let you go first, Anna. Um, all, most of my fights actually got cut from the film. So that oh, was, that true, was devastating. You did. I learned so many fights and most of them were cut for time. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I had to make time for my fights, you know what I'm saying? I know. I mean, it made, at the end of the day, they were like, she's she's not a killing machine. She's the one person out of place here. So I was like, I get it from a story perspective, but like, I would love to fight too. Um, but in my experience, the choreography was, was not too shabby. Uh, it was very hard. It was very overwhelming as someone who doesn't have a lot of kinetic memory built up. Like you said, Yoshi, you guys have all done action projects. Um, but it was very, I will give a shout out to Teresa Tang. She had so many fights in this film, so much choreography to memorize. And she was a, she was a champion. I feel like from being there, like with the training and all that stuff and then watching the movie, I didn't notice that your, your action, your whatever fights were cut because it made sense for the film and it yeah. worked. It, I think I think we still get to see just how badass you are and have those moments, but also it's not like it's fully stretched out again, right? Um, and you guys will understand why when you watch the movie uh, of why her character is that way. And it's kind of cool. I really, I really dig it, um, the way they portrayed that. Uh, for me, I, I really enjoyed it because very rarely do you get as much time to prep than you do to film. Because we... We had like about a, well, I, I, I flew out to Budapest about a month before filming. So we had a lot of time, you know, mine and Mike's fight was pretty much done within the first couple of weeks. Um, the only thing that was hard for me was when we were rehearsing this, I was rehearsing as if I had a katana like everybody else. Um, but when we got to the day, I did not have a katana. In fact, I had a, a, uh, an Oni club. So um you know, the, the char son's character is neither of the witch nor the samurai. He's actually like of the Oni descendant kind of dealio, um, which is why he has the club. So I was like, that's cool. But we also had never practiced with the weapon. So when I got to set and I grabbed the weapon, you know, we're, we're practicing for like a lot of wrist switches and like fast beats and movement. I had to change it all up because I was like, well, I can't swing this thing like I would a sword. It was like a baseball bat. Right. So um, I, we didn't hit anybody too hard. The only thing that we did have to do because the bat or the Oni was uh, club was so heavy. There was a move I had to do where I had to hit Mike on the back and then had to recoil off of him. But I couldn't do it fast enough because it was so heavy that I was like, Mike, he's like, I know, I know you're going to have to hit me for real. I was like, yeah, he was like, OK, here we go. I was like, breathe <laughs> out, baby. Oh my god! Oh, no. It's in there. You'll see it in the in the film. You you hear the whoo. Yeah, I noticed him walking. I, I did it. We did it once, and then we were done. Him. No, I'm joking. Um, yeah. but, <laughs> not multiple no. times. Not multiple times. That's, but uh, uh, we did also break a lot of swords. Um, oh. yeah, we did. Because a lot of it was you know clashing with the swords, <laughs> and then there was moments where I couldn't clash and recoil. They wanted it to be clash, and instead of me recoiling, they wanted me to pass through it two different types of motions. And if the sword didn't pull back in time, I just obliterated the sword. So I think we went through like five different swords uh, at the final fight. This is why the next one's going to have lightsabers instead. You can't break those. That's yeah. it's, it's a lot better. Um, and they're even, they're, there's other problems with that one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh, hey, but, lightsabers, I'm down. Yeah, let's right. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be like the greatest Anna, you down? Like, let's go. Jedi Sith. ever? Yeah, let's do it. I, Ron, I, mean, I would say like, Doing all the sword work for this film inspired me. So now I'm keeping up with martial arts outside of it because I was like, this is so much fun. It's just such a joy. That's, that's yeah. really impressive, you know, um, and, and I love that. And, and I, do, I do see the point about Anna, you, you know, some of your fight scenes getting cut because, you know, when you think about it, you know, Luna really is. Uh, getting pulled into this world that she's never been exposed to before. We yeah. see, it's one of the things I really like about the movie. It's very believable with her character arc because you, you start from having no training to going through this training. 
Uh, and then very slowly, gradually, but not to the same extent as any Onobagesha, you know, out there or anything like that, um, you're, you, you start to acquire skills, but you still have a little bit more training to go, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so I get it. That being said, yeah, I would have loved to see you just tear up the freaking like, you yeah. know, floor right there uh, and everything. Which, oh, she's an action star now. So yeah, you're going to keep doing yeah. it. I think by the next the next movie, you're it's just going to be like a John Wick fest with you. You're just going to tear yeah. through rooms with a with a katana and everything, which I think is going to be awesome. Um, yeah, I think honestly, the one of the best things really is between you, between Teresa, uh, and and between May and and Aya as well. There's this beautiful uh, you know sense of sisterhood. I think that really just connects all of you care all of your characters together. Um, this, this, you know, idea of the Onobugeisha really being ignored, I mm. think, for most of samurai culture, but them being as fierce as the samurai, even more so to a degree, um, you know, I think is, is really wonderful and really important that they highlight. Uh, to you, you know, did you take that sense of like feminism and sisterhood away from the movies? And, and, and did you end up being as close to May, Aya and, and Teresa by the end of the shoot, I guess? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Teresa and I, because we had the most scenes together, we became quite close. We also have very similar like goofball personalities that also revolve around food. So we were always like going to catering together. Um, but I definitely, what I love most about the movie is that though these two women are sort of rivals in, in a sense, it's never about a guy. The love story is so in the buried in the background that it's almost not a story at all. It's about women coming into their own and realizing their own destiny, which I feel like as a kid, the only other movie I saw do that was Mulan. And I, I'm so excited, even though it's rated R, I was like, all the kids, all the 17 year old kids or however old you have to be to watch rated R on Netflix. Um, I'm excited for them to get to see the representation of multiple Asian women on screen and get to pick and choose which one do I identify with out of all of them, who, who am I out of this? Which I feel like, you know, as, an, as Asian kids, you almost always are like, I'm the Yellow Ranger because that's, that's the only option that there is or I'm Mowgli in the Jungle Book, you know? So I'm very, right. very, that that so many women are going to get to see powerful different kinds of women owning different parts of themselves and coming into their own absolutely and and not even not even on a personal level but really reshaping the way that these organizations you know changing the hierarchy of how these organizations have been operating for years you're getting away from that traditionalist sort of point of view which was very chauvinistic and, and sexist to something a lot more progressive. And I think that that's actually a, such a beautiful thing for these characters to experience as you know the movie progresses, I, I think. Not that and I want to spoil the ending. No, and if anything, it's almost like, it feels like it's made for women. Like Yoshi's walking around without sleeves. You know what I mean? Like clearly this is for the ladies. <laughs> that was for the ladies, it wasn't for me? Ah, uh, yeah, damn. It's for the ladies and the, and the men's. Okay, and good. And the non-PBs, anyone. It's for anyone. all. Yeah. yeah. It, it's <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take the compliments. <laughs> um, you know, we, we've been talking a little bit about representation here, which I think is, is so critical for this movie, because uh, both of you are very strong advocates for representation. Yes. And I think especially on social and life uh, about strong Asian representation in film, especially in action film, especially in studio driven big budget action movies, you know, um, and, and with Blade of the 47 Ronin, which is a continuation of a big budget, you know, studio film that really was directed by, you know, predominantly white filmmakers, um, you know, and star, you know, it, it did have, you know, an Asian cast, but it, it really wasn't heavily marketed or, or, or done through the lens of an Asian filmmaker. When you get Ron involved in a, in a sequel like this, at least we've got Asian storytellers telling an Asian story with a predominantly Asian cast. For both of you guys, what did it mean to you to be part of this, to be part of this action franchise, this movie, um, and, and really just, you know, spreading and persisting this representation throughout mainstream studio uh, culture? Yoshi, do you want to go first? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, the cool thing is, it's, it's all a byproduct of what we do, right? Like, <clears throat> Of course, representation is important. It's something that we've strived for to, to, to see for ourselves, but also to create the space for it. But also it's a byproduct of what of us doing what we love, right? The passion, 
that um, we're putting into our work, right? And, and to be able to be a part of something like this is exciting nonetheless. Um, but what it is, is it's so much fun. Like it's so much fun to go to, you know, training and hang out with these guys who are, most of them are my friends from way back when, right? Like, again, like we said earlier, Anna is my first friend in, in Hollywood. Like, and, and to see where we came from, where we were the token Asians for a project, like it was either her or me, or sometimes we'd, it was just the two of us. Like now having a full cast of that. And like, I got used to for the longest time being like, you, do you guys want to have like Asian food for lunch? And then they're like, oh, no, maybe not today, you know? But with them, it was like, yeah, duh. Yeah, we're going to get Asian food. What do you mean? Let's go, right? And then it was, it was family. Like we became family so fast. And again, we're seeing, we're working with people who are, um, of different levels of like, oh, I've been in the industry forever. I, you know, I'm new stuff like that. And and uh, working with people you looked up to, like Mark Dacascos, like uh, he he was our champion for so long, right? And I feel like we are helping lift that weight off his shoulders a little bit, and helping spread that because that can't be easy, right? And and um, I just I just from this project i just want to work with good people and friends like that's that's the bottom line right yeah. so. um absolutely and yes i love how we always went to that one pho well, not pho place it was like a thai place like every day for lunch that was so yeah, 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 yeah. Like, oh, i'm getting my chicken um <laughs> but i i think representation i mean representation is the whole reason i have a career it was it was only seeing margaret cho perform stand up when i was a teenager that it occurred to me i could have this this career. I should go after this career because I saw someone who looked like me doing something beautiful and who offered me escape from my pain at the time. And there's this wonderful TED talk. I wish I could remember the name of it, where this film, female filmmaker, they did a bunch of studies and they actually found that the media that we consume influences whether or not we get married, the career we choose, the hobbies we have, the beliefs we hold. And so when we talk about representation in TV and film and media in general, it's not just because it's like, hey, we want everything to be equal, let us see ourselves. It's because it literally influences the decisions that we make on a day-to-day -day basis. It influences the humanization of Asian Americans, especially during a time when we're, we're experiencing all this discrimination discrimination from COVID. Um, and so it really humanizes and allows people who are maybe from more middle America, who don't see more diverse people to understand and to empathize with races and genders and sexualities of all kinds. And so getting to actually be a part of a film that has all Asian, all Asian American actors and some from, from Asia, it's it's just a dream come true to be like, wow, like I don't remember ever seeing a, a movie as a kid unless it come from it came from China, in which I can watch an entire cast of people who look like me and nothing about them is about their race. It's not about a movie of like the Asian person is Asian and they're coming to terms with that. It, you know, and it's also hard because we don't have to be a we, have, we feel like we have to be a monolith for every single experience with this representation. Like Yoshi and I have talked a lot about how there's this pressure on our community to just blindly support any Asian project and like put as much support as you can behind it because of the nature of this industry and the power imbalance. And so it's wonderful to get to have a film in which you're like, okay, this is the fantasy one now. And now it's just going into the pile of our ever growing representation where it's like, it's not about us being Asian. We get to have yeah. every genre, we get to have B movies, we get to have good movies, we get to have bad movies. Like. I, we just want what everybody else has. Yeah. And that's when you know we've made it because when we have those kinds of projects out there, that means we're here to stay. Yeah. yeah. We're in every part of media, right? And speaking of the, the, the monolith thing, I actually um, <clears throat> talked about this earlier today. But when we were having those, you know, because we all wanted to go get Asian food and whatnot, but we're still not a monolith in the sense that we were sitting there, we're eating, and I get my chicken and rice. I start eating with my hands. Because I'm Indonesian. I'm from Indonesia. And I look up, I'm like, you know, I'm enjoying my food. I look up. They're all looking at me like, what are you doing? It was so was hot. Like, it was so the none of you guys so eat with your hands. I'm Filipino, but like that food was fucking scalding, Yoshi. <laughs> Listen, these they don't feel anything anymore. You don't have feeling in them. <laughs> okay. Like, I was going to say, how are you, you going to eat chicken and rice? Not use your hands. Come on, man. Like, I can't. Oh my God. 
I mean, I'm I had to, I had to I culture them. You know what I'm saying? I can't handle hot stuff like that. You know, I mean, yes. that's <laughs> awesome. You know, my baby hands were like, no, it's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun to see Yoshi just straight up. Old school. <laughs> yeah, that's how you do it. You know, <laughs> Indo represent. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's really nice that actually you guys had that sense of community that you were able to just get together and just, you, you know, especially when you've had shared experiences in this industry, you know, getting together and a bond over all of that, to talk about all of that and talk about how you're reshaping it too, um, over a nice meal. I mean, that's there's something so comforting about that. And, you know, I, I, I've frequently compared this movie to like a Fast and Furious movie. And I think that it's an apt comparison. They're both very, very, you know, tongue in cheek, fun action romps with great choreography, great stunts, but they're also very much deep down about that unification, that family, you know, um, ideal and everything like that. And I thought that that, that really spoke true uh, in this movie. Um, I, I would love to talk about Mark, if that if I, yeah. that's okay. I know, I know Yoshi, you kind of touched on it as well, um, mm. but, but he is a legend in, in our community and in, in our side of uh, Hollywood. And uh, to see him and to work with him and everything like that. I just got to ask, how was that like? I think, Anna, you spent like a large part of this movie, majority of this movie with Mark. Um, you know, I, I mean, like for, I'd love to start with you for that reason. <laughs> Mark is, okay, I'm very sorry. I spent most of the 90s over in Japan. So like, I, there's like a big piece of American culture I'm missing. So I didn't, I wasn't as familiar with Mark's work. Of course, I like looked him up when, when I found out he was part of the cast. I was like, wow, this guy's a staple of the Asian community. I should have known about him. What I love most about Mark is how much he hates cars. Every time you talk to him, he will talk about why you should sell your car and how cars are a menace to society and the world. Like this is his cause. This is his advocacy work. And it was so wonderful to get to talk to someone who was just so passionate about the environment. And I was like, this. and so like my experience of Mark was, you know, every time you would find out, I would be like, oh, he's the guy who hates cars. And then you'd find out, oh, he's an amazing gymnast. Oh, he was like raised by champion martial artists and can like kill you. Oh, he did like this. And then we saw photos of him when he was young. And I was like, Mark, you were so hot. You're like a heartthrob. You're a babe. So every fact I was uncovering like, about Mark over the course of filming, it just made me fall in love with him. And he's such a kind open-hearted, sweet individual. The camera starts rolling, his face changes. He's like, he's a bona fide movie star and he has the it factor. And I learned so much from him and he imparted a lot of very valuable advice to all of the cast, given you know the nature of his existence in the business and just being an older person with more experience, more wisdom. And so I, I love Mark. I would die for Mark. <laughs> I too would die for Mark. Right? Yes. Yes. Protect him at all costs. I, I don't care. I mean, were you trying to kill him for half the movie, though? I mean, come on. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. Son wouldn't. Son wouldn't. Yoshi know, would. Yeah. yeah. But no, so again, he was one of the few people that I got to like fight in this in this project. You know, you you I've known of him. You know, the Crow Drive, all of that. Like huge star, right? And you see how he moves, a beast, right? But there's always a difference, like having done this a while doing action and like doing it for, you know, yourself in real life or, or for videos is so different than when you get to set and then having to perform with the costume, with the wardrobe, with the limitations, with all of that, there's always different things. And then you kind of get to feel the energy as you play with them. Um, you know, and cause it's, we're acting through our, our, our body, our body language. And, Man, his energy, it was so kind and soft while his movements were like fierce and, and, and hard, right? And it was such a cool thing to see. I think in my entire career, I have not fought somebody who just flowed so well. The way he moved, I was like, it was butter. It was butter. I, the, the experience shone through. Uh, um, all of it. And, and, and it just was so much fun to play with him. I, I wish we had a little bit more time to explore that part of it. Um, there was supposed to be a bit more. We, again, of course, ran out of time, but I hope to do it again someday soon. And, and um, you know, they always say, don't meet your heroes and whatnot. 
I did. And he's, he's freaking awesome. He's everything that I could have wished for. And, and um, I'm excited for him. Like, cause he's just got so much stuff going on. And what was the crazy, was it him and Dustin that was like running every morning or something like that before our trainings? It was crazy. It was him and Dustin and they would like, run for miles, miles. And I'm like, we're about to go to training. You're working out before, <laughs> but that, that tells me what kind of dedication I need to have in the future. Right. Right. Because look at, look at him. Have you seen his like Instagram post dudes holding a handstand for like ages? Like it's nothing I'm like, okay. All right. I got to get my dedication up there, you know? So I, 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 I really enjoyed working with Mark. It makes a lot of sense. And I, I totally feel inspired every time I see a post of his too. I just, honestly, I feel lazy. I'm like sitting there eating like an ice cream cone while he's doing <laughs> handstands in his Instagram post. I'm like, Jesus, what am I doing with my life? I say before eating the rest of the ice cream cone. Um, but, but yeah, um, no, I, it, Mark is, is amazing. I'm so glad that you guys got a chance to like uh, fight with him. I, I think definitely his, it, in a heavily choreographed movie like this with such amazing scenes, you need someone <laughs> slick as Mark uh, to, to portray the smoothness here. And that's, that's one of the things I thought uh, Ron did beautifully, that Mark did beautifully. Um, you mentioned Dustin too. Dustin did a great job um, beautifully uh, through this. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, I think- It felt good having to give him one. <laughs> <laughs> punch him out yeah um he had a great scene he Teresa, and mike had a great scene on a train where i think he's kind of combining both the katana and he's got his guns too and it just looked really full-on john wick which i love but i it, it leads me to a question that i kind of wanted to ask you guys um in a movie with um like great gun work great you know swordsmanship and then a crap ton of awesome magic scenes uh if you guys had the choice between steel, guns, and magic, what would you guys choose and why? Um, My club. Anna, I'd love to start with you. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, and the club. And the club. Sorry. The club, oh, too. Oh, yeah. And the club. Oh, well, I feel pressured <laughs> to choose the club, but it's too oh. heavy for me. It's too heavy. Uh, probably magic, hands down. Like, I could I could attack people with just, you know, bull- you'd run out of bullets if my sword breaks, I'm screwed. But magic, you're dead. You're dead. Yeah. I, I, kind of unfair kind of unfair <laughs> kind of unfair i Fair mean enough. you'll see it in the movie but kind of unfair <laughs> <laughs> i mean you had people without magic in this movie holding their own pretty well i'll say you know but that's yeah. true uh, all right uh let me let me change the question up a little bit because that's that's a cheat for magic everyone's gonna choose magic but if we take magic out of the question you got gun steals and clubs mm. now now how does that change things <laughs> pew pew yeah, guns. <laughs> guns. Okay. Very, I mean, yeah. Very similar to magic, I suppose. You can just, from yeah. Far, yeah right? I mean, again, you'll see that in the movie as well. <laughs> you'll like, see that in the movie. We, yeah. we play into all of that, which is awesome. Like, <laughs> I love if, it. If you, got, if you guys had to choose a favorite action scene in this movie, because this is nonstop action for, for the movies, um, which one, either one that you participate in or just one that you could see, which ones were your favorites? I think the Metro bus scene or the metro scene was my my favorite i was like whoa i love how brutal it got in that scene yeah i okay i'm not going to choose the same one because i was going to say the same one (laughs) taking my stuff but whatever um i think my favorite was the fight between uh teresa and eniko eniko um that fight is is pretty gnarly um I really enjoyed that one a lot. It's a pretty brutal fight. The yeah. that's the one at the end, right? Like that's the um, one at the end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it goes pretty hard. Uh they're hitting each other really really. It, it's brutal and I it's love a that. Brutal freaking movie, um, man. Yeah, it is it really is a brutal movie. Um that's what I like. I was definitely going to choose the metro scene too. Um you know, honestly cuz it's just it's so cool. I, I, it would have been awesome to have you guys in that scene as well, you know, just like kind of battling through there. Actually, I think Yoshi, you are, you're in that scene, right? You're in the, no, you're mm-hmm. not in the Metro scene. No, 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 no. I apologize for that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting and waiting. That's true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're, you're waiting for the sitting, the waiting, wishing. Yeah, He's hanging yeah. out with me. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. We're holding hands, waiting for everybody to get there. And we're like, oh, I'll just chill here. Having a mimosa. 
like that. <laughs> yeah, drink one was a. I'll, but I'll, uh, you know, I'll feed you because your hands are <laughs> occupied. Uh, did you guys? Um, one of the things I kind of noticed, and and I want to give it up to Mike Mo. He's he's awesome in this movie. He's hilarious. He's great. Uh, he, he his action choreography. Is Talk awesome. about another person you enjoy fighting with. Like it was just so easy. I think we got everything in like two takes. All of our, our fight was so fast. We we blazed through our fight. They were like, oh, we're already, we're like three hours ahead. Hell yeah. You guys are amazing to watch. Like, it's just like you, it looks so in the moment and yet it's so flowy, which I always feel like is such a hard thing. So I'm always like, and one and two and three and four, you know? <laughs> and you guys look like you're actually just throwing down but are masters of your craft so it's wonderful to get to watch yeah we go pretty hard we're like, oh, cut <laughs> hey you good you good yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna have to hit, hit you, you the back hit. for real now with the club i'm sorry <laughs> yeah 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 now this is gonna hurt okay <laughs> <laughs> do you guys do you ever have what happened do you have room to improvise in any of those fights i mean like or is it is it kind of the one and two and three and four as, as anna was kind of alluding to I mean, generally, if, you know, we get there, we, we walk it through, we feel it out and we go, ah, you know what, that move does not work with the new setting that we're in. Let's <laughs> tweak it and change it or whatever. But you generally don't improvise in the middle of like a take because that's when people can get hurt. If you have to improvise, it's like to make sure, like if you stepped up on something and you're falling and you have to like improvise with something there, Yes but you don't improvise adding anything. Taking away a move is okay, but adding a move, not okay because they're not ready for it, right? It's a dance. I am very much on the side of if it gets a little bit too wonky, we get close. I just call, I stop and I separate myself from, from the other person so that we can just reset. They can always reset unless there's like a pyro or something that happens. It's better to just stop and reset. So I, I try not to improvise um, anything crazy because that's when people get hurt. And then you did it for your own ego and somebody gets hurt. It's just not fun. You know, um, <clears throat> Good night. With Mike, everything was pretty much like, again, one or two takes for every little shot, maybe three at most, which is crazy because we were doing like, you know, uh, eight to 12 beats um, per shot. It was, it was, it was, it was intense. Also, that was the day where, we were outside at night and it was freezing and I'm in my sleeveless shirt. I was like, mm -hmm. in between takes, I was like, mm -hmm. Oh my God. Well, it looked good at least it, it you know, you keep the, like Anna said, keep the ladies entertained and, and Mike Manalo's as well. So there you go. Um, it was worth Ooh. it. I'm going to tell you it was worth it. Um, but yeah. Um, Anna, if, you know, I'm going to say when, I'm not going to say if, when we get this next 47 Ronin movie, um, obviously, uh, you know, what would you want to see for your character? How would you want Luna to grow, um, you know, from a magic perspective or a samurai perspective or a gun perspective? I'm not going to spoil anything here, you know, but. Um, pitch. There's a great <laughs> evil coming. Yeah. And Luna and Onami are now, you know, a team. We're. We're just together. I get to do my magic. She gets to be her little badass self. And I would love if Aya or May actually were more ambitious and one of them became the big, the big bad. Ooh. What's um oh is this coming out before the movie comes out or after? Oh, the interview. Uh good question. I think <laughs> Great that changes to, how we answer a question. Spoiling everything. You know what? Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna do a full spoiler thing. We'll do it. We'll do it the day the movie comes out, so that folks can watch. Got it. Yeah, I was yeah. like, because I'm pretty sure one of those two <laughs> that you just mentioned is not gonna be there too. <laughs> oh, oh my God! You are you are correct. <laughs> Whoop. I'm so sorry. Like literally, I think the, the I, I was so used to interviewing you guys after everyone yeah. had seen the movie that yeah, I completely yeah. forgot. I but, thought it was you no know, hold part, but yeah. you could raise people back from the dead. That's all I'm gonna say. You could. Listen, I'm an Oni magic. son, or whatever descendant. Magic, yeah. yeah, yeah. When, when you got Change magic the hair in color, this color, it's oh look, it's Moon. I mean, let's <laughs> wait. Let's no, be that's honest. your name. That's your name. I can't do that. <laughs> Let, let's you're, be honest. You're moon. That's, 
Fast and Furious brought back people from the dead. There's not even magic in that world. That makes no yeah. sense. But with you guys, you guys can totally do a lot more. Uh, I mean, they, so, flew, so. they flew a tank with a helicopter, if I'm not right. mistaken. So I think we could bring back everybody. You guys, can, it's more plausible to bring back someone in this world than it is to bring back anyone from that world. And like 50 million people are back from that world. So it's, yeah, you, you guys are good. Trust me. I'm with that. I'm with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I love that idea. Um, honestly, just, just seeing, first off, I'm going to call it Lunami. Seeing the <laughs> Lunami connection um, would, would just be the greatest team. Better than Onanu. 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 See, seeing you guys as a team and function as a team is just one of the best things ever, I think. Uh, and the chemistry that you have and, and Mike, too, you know, you guys make a really good trio. Um, the, the chemistry that all of you guys have is, is excellent. So seeing more of that, I would love to see it. And, and seeing some friends come come back as bad guys, I think, would up the emotional stakes a lot. Um, I would love to see that get made. Um, and then you throw I think on the like most character could use like a strong love interest. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not? You know, Sun I'm comes sure back. Like you know, <laughs> <laughs> joins the beautiful. Ronin. Yeah, I like, I like that too. I mean, uh, Yoshi, is that also what you'd like to see, or uh, do you do you have other ideas as well? If you saw a second, uh, listen, a, a, another song? if if Sun's death is 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 uh, set in stone, then that's that. But if I could come back as a different character, then you know, even better. Listen. Different, different looks. You take off the the my eyeshadow, change the hair, different facial hair. It's another character. I'm down for that. I mean, like, I son could have. We don't know anything about son's family. He might have a twin brother. He might have a cousin. You know, that's identical. And cousin. Yeah. 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 It opens. It opens. He might be a clone. Even. You know? Yeah. And the sun always rises. You know what I'm saying? So. Oh, there. That at go. night. Yeah. 47 Ronin, Rise of the Sun, uh, the Rising Sun. And then, and then it just comes the Rising up, Sun. You know, the Rising Sun. Uh, and, then, and then we get Sun's return. Um, I, honestly, I, I feel like I could talk with you guys all day. This has just been so much fun and goofing around with you guys and, and just joking and, and enjoying. Uh, it's, it's as fun as this movie, honestly. And I, I feel like people are going to love the movie when they see it. It's so much fun. Um, you guys are amazing in it. And I think it helps that you guys are fun. So the movie's even more fun because of that. But that being said, um, I know that we're going to have to wrap up, but I always love talking to you guys. I'm so grateful for this and I'm so grateful for this movie. I can't wait for people to see it. Blade of the 47 run and hitting, hitting Netflix this, uh, end of this month. And, uh, October 25th, October 25th. There you go. <laughs> and, uh, thank you guys as always. <laughs> Thank you. Lectures, fanboys, professional artists, and professors. Maybe a nerd who's just like you, talking about the things that you like too. So I invite you to the NOC. 